Thank you so much. Welcome to Politics Today with Apostle Israel Great. In this video, we are going to looking at something very important. You see, we need to understand the person who is out there being used by the enemy to attack His Excellency Mr. Pitobi. We need to know who Soludo is. And we need to know what Soludo sets out to achieve. This will help the human family to make an informed decision. And those who are in a position to call Soludo to order, they will do so. And people will not also be discouraged by the activities of uh, Soludo, the governor of Anambra State, and the conspirators, those who are working with him and those who are sponsoring what he is doing. To enable you to understand the P2B saga, let me present to the human family what Soludo, a CBN governor, did to a sitting president, our dearly beloved president, Yaradwa. You see, Soludo is our son. He's an able son. We can't deny him that he's dancing naked in the market. As you already know, a madman does not feel the shame of nakedness. We, the relations, are the ones going through psychological trauma as a result of the gross responsibility of Chukuma Soludo. We are the ones suffering the shame. And this is not the first time this man is acting this way. That's why the human family need to know who he is. I want to present to the human family how Soludo ridiculed and mocked a sitting president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Musa Yaradwa. You see, Soludo is a man that stands logic on his head. He denies the obvious. Soludo is a man that creates his own facts and figures. Even when he knows the truth, he tries to argue that that's not the truth. So he presents himself as a man who, in some cases, or once in a while, suffer what may be called reasoning disorder. Or he may just be a man that is a victim of mischievous madness. Or he may just be a man that is willingly ignorant. But one thing is common about Chukuma Soludo. The man is very treacherous. Chukuma Soludo will go to any extent to achieve any mandate, any purpose. If the cash is right, there is nothing he will not do. If what he did to a sitting president, without conscience, if the argument he made before Federal Executive Council, a man of his caliber would do that, you would then understand why he is writing the trash. History beckons. I can't keep silent. After reading that trash, my health was broken down. I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat. I had to start making calls. What has happened to our son again? Why is he behaving this way? Let me present to you what Soludo did to Yaradwa. It will help you understand the issue at stake. I have with me Daily Independent Newspaper. Daily Independent Newspaper. Uh, of August 27, 2007. The catching headline here said, Why I Stopped Soludo by Yaradwa. Why I Stopped Soludo by Yaradwa. Now, you will see a report of what happened, why 
you are doing stopped Soludo. The report has started by saying President Umaru Yaradua at the weekend explained that he stopped the Naira denomination policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria because it is a wasteful venture out of tune with economic realities. Sitting President, telling the whole world, Soludo's Naira denomination is a wasteful venture. That's the word of the president. Wasteful venture. Out of tune with economic realities. Wasteful venture. Out of tune with economic realities. These are not my words. They are the words of our beloved President Musa Radua of blessed memory. Hear him again. He said... CBN Governor Chukuma Soludo, in announcing the policy, ignored due process and the rule of law. The president speaking. Chukuma Soludo, in announcing the policy, ignored due process and the rule of law. The president continues. The point was made in a statement. Let me say what the president said. Let's say President Yeradua. Yeradua expressed concern that under his so-called strategic agenda for Naira presented to the media, the CBN will abdicate its monetary responsibility. That the CBN would, without consultation, salute the CBN governor, Without consultation, sets commencement date of August 1, 2008 for the redenomination of the Naira and the introduction of new Naira notes and coins. The president continued. The CBN apparently had not given due consideration to the huge cost implication of the currency redenomination at a time when there are more urgent demands on the resources available to the government. The economic value of the entire project to the nation at this point in time is doubtful. That's the president speaking. Then, the president directed the minister for finance to meet with the CBN governor and explain these issues to him so that he will understand and take a second look at the wasteful project. However, in the present circumstances, the president is not convinced of the merits of the Naira redenomination plan put forward by the CBN governor without appropriate regard for the present administration's insistence on due process and rule of law. That is why, in exercise of his power as chief officer of the Federation and with the power of the president, the Attorney General announced the suspension of the policy. The statement from the President added. It added that CBN Act signed into law in the last week of Obasanjo's tenure was gazetted on June 1st, after Yaradua had assumed office, and that it does not grant the CBN powers so Ludo claimed before the Federal Executive Council when he was summoned that only the president can give approval for Naira denomination if he is satisfied as to the desirability or necessity. The section of the CBN Act is presented here 
for all to look at and understand. Now look at the issues. The CBN governor then, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, came up with a very huge budget. The type of budgetary provision that can even take care of our annual budget. What are you going to do with this money? He said it is for Naira re-denomination. Yet I do I see a disciplined man, a clean man, a sound man, very intelligent, a committed Nigerian looking for the good of his people. He invited Chukuma Soludo, the CBN governor, to meet with the Federal Executive Council. Could you believe that in that meeting, Soludo argued strongly that by the CBN autonomy, as provided in the CBN Act, he does not need approval from anybody to redesign the Naira anytime he feels like. And the issue of due process or rule of law does not come in. The president was worried. Why are you saying this? And why are you doing this? The provision of the CBN Act is clear that you need the input of the sitting president before you redesign the Naira. Soludo argued to the contrary that the autonomy granted the CPA empowers him to go ahead and redesign the Naira without anybody's input. As for the budget, how can we spend such amount of money when there are pressing needs and the project which you want to carry out does not seem to add any value to our national life at a point like this. Soludo said he's acting according to the provisions of the CBN Act. That is why the president had to cite the CBN Act for Soludo. But the question needs to be asked. Will a CBN governor, who is a professor, who went to the university, not be able to read the CBN Act and understand it? Soludo knew what he was doing. He little called a sitting president, making arguments that are baseless. He refused to listen. Until the president has to give order and say, look, as long as I sit as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you dare not redesign the Naira without consulting me first. And Naira will actually be redesigned when I give approval. Therefore, Soludo, stop. That's what this explanation became that's why this explanation became necessary because the president is explaining why he stopped soludo so that the people will not listen to the propaganda to all those things going on this is the fact on ground the truth and nothing but the truth who was at the receiving end the sitting president president musa Yaradua. Look at ordinary appointee. is the one challenging the president, telling him, I have power to redesign the Naira and to spend any amount I feel like. I don't need your input. I don't need to consult you. I don't need to seek your approval. The president told him, no. Look at the CBN Act. You have to go by it. There are laws you need to obey. When Soludo sets out to work for his paymaster, 
What he first did was to invite P2B to come and run under Abga ticket. You can see the hypocrisy. Does he want P2B to be president? No. He had been paid. They have seen the star of P2B. They have, they you know, this people will star. They have seen what is going to happen in 2023. That if this man is not stopped, he is likely going to be the next president of Nigeria. Then Soludo was draft, drafted in to be the one that will stop P2B presidency. They promised him, let we go again. After eight years, we'll hand over to you. The same promise they made to a Boeing state governor, by which he moved from PDP to APC. The same promise they made to Rocha Sokrocha, former Imo state governor. The same promise they made to so many of them. Motis Okalo have been deceived by that promise for so many years. They made that same promise to Boneonu. They made that promise to Ngige. I can count over 20. They made the same promise to, and they disappointed all of them. Even that Toeze that was just uh, speaking as if he doesn't know what he's talking about. This is the same agreement. Buhera used him and promised that after his second tenure, he will hand over to Anibo man. That is the game to, they play to men who are self-centered, who betray their people for ordinary monetary gain. Thank God. Peter B told him no. I am not out to be an Igbo president. I am not desperate to be president. I am desperate to change the situation of things in Nigeria. I am thinking of Nigeria, not an ethnic group. So leave Abga. I can run on that Abga platform. Soludo has a presidential candidate on that Abga. Yet, he is campaigning for PDP candidates. Then, to make sure he will destroy what P2B is doing, he then wrote his trash, the rubbish, the unthinkable, the inconsequential history, beckon, I cannot keep silent. Which chapter reading it? You just drop it to the dustbin. Because we are reading it, you'll be asking yourself, what is it that the writer want to achieve? What is the problem? What is actually saying? You have a presidential candidate. You dialogue with this one. You dialogue with this other one. What is your problem? Where do you go? What, what's your direction? All he is seeking to achieve is to see how he can discourage people so that they will not vote for P2B. In spite of all the international poll results that put P2B as the leading candidate, Soludo labels in vain to tell people so P2B is just cutting crews. He cannot even win. He can be winning in Anambra State because he's a homeboy, but in South East he will not even get more than 25%. Can you imagine? He stands logic on his head. Act good as if he has this ring disorder. P2B is not the first person who is doing that. If he can do it to a sitting president, Omaru Musa Yaradua, you can then imagine. He did it to Ngozo Kojiwela. We can continue counting. People who did this type of thing, standing logic on here, denying the obvious. Something that is so glaring. He'll be looking at it, so Ludo will deny it. And will be painting a different picture which he want people to work with so that they will not vote for P2B so that uh, Atiku will, he will work for Atiku if Atiku wins Atiku have promised him 80 years after he saluted after he has served as governor he will then come and be the first president of Nigeria of Igbo extraction that if you allow P2B to go now Remember that P2B's chances will block your own chances. So Soludo went to market and started writing trash that is meaningless. But you see, let nobody be discouraged. 
I have given you clear example. How is professor who carry the CBN Act and be reading it and claim not to understand the content? And claim that, look, he does not need to consult the president before he redesigned Naira. If he can do that to a sitting president, you can then understand the P2B saga. That's the sense of this video. They will not let us understand the P2B saga. What you see Soludo do is consistent. What he's doing to P2B is consistent with his nature and character. P2B is not the first person to suffer in his hand. So the human family, the Nigerian people should understand. Go ahead, mobilize for people to vote for this choice of Nigerian people. Everywhere you go in Nigeria, they are thinking P2B will what? But Soludo is claiming not to know about it. He's pretending. He is paid to pretend he does not know that in Southeast here, P2B will get over 70% of the vote to be cast in every state. In South-South, he will get over 50% of the vote to be cast in every state. In the Middle Belt, North Central, P2B will get over 40% of the vote to be cast. He will win Abuja outrightly. In Lagos, he will get over 40% of the vote to be cast in Lagos. In Southwest State, there is no state in Southwest. P2B will not get over 25% of the vote cast. Soludo knows that. There is no state in Nigeria where P2B will not get votes. There is no state in Nigeria, even in Adamawa. He will get over 25% vote in, in, in Adamawa. He will get vote in Bono State. There is no state in Nigeria where P2B will not get votes. Let nobody be discouraged by the antics of Chuko Masoludo. We all know him. It is consistent with his nature and character. So let's move on. A new Nigeria of our dream is right there before us. Everybody should be strong with it. But let us go out and walk. And we must not forget to pray. We need God to get into that our strong city. That our dream heaven. That new Nigeria. We need God on our side. And God is actually on our side. Let us be strong and united. Please share this video. Let people know Soludo is acting a game. And the, the game is up. It's of no use. Subscribe and be part of what God is doing. Thank you and God bless you.